X-Ray i1 Studio Color Spectrophotometer is an extremely versatile color management device. It can pretty much do everything, including profiling papers coming out from your inkjet printer. The thing is this, when you try to go in and profile large sheet of paper, for example, 11 and a half by 17 sheet of paper or larger, the program will show you properly where the patches are supposed to print, which is supposed to be at the very top like this. However, in reality, when the program sends the file to the printer, it prints it right in the middle like that. The problem with this is this is not using this sheet of paper very efficiently and effectively. And the other thing too is that the larger the sheet of paper you go to, the more expensive it is. So I have found a way so that we can hack the program so that it will print properly like this. Let's find out together in this video how you would do that. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I'll be showing you this walkthrough on my Mac and then later on I will release another video that shows it on a PC. As far as calibration go, I'm not going to finish with the calibration. However, I will only show you how to print the first set of patches and the settings that you need to dial in in your printer driver dialog along with the paper size so that it prints properly on these large sheet of paper. The other thing too is that for this demonstration, I'll be using Moab and Trotta RAG 190 to do the printing or the demonstration on and along with my Epson P800 printer. The thing is this, if you use a Canon printer, the setting will probably be very similar. However, the dialog may look slightly different. Let's jump into i1 Studio. I'll choose a calibration device and choose color print. In this dialog, this is where we choose the printer and the paper size. I already have the proper printer selected along with the paper size, Super B 13 by 19. If you look at the preview on the right, you will see that the color patches print at the very top of the sheet, very similar to what you're seeing right now on the screen. This would be really fantastic. However, the reality of it is when you go and print this, this is the way how it's going to print out. This is not using the paper or this large sheet of paper efficiently at all. There are a lot of white space surrounding this and you can no longer print anything else on this sheet. So this is not the way how it's supposed to print out, but I have gone in and manipulate the way how this is supposed to come out and change it so that it looks proper. And I will show you how to do this. The other thing too is that once this prints out, what you can simply do is rotate the paper and insert it into the printer that way so that the second set of patches, the iterative patch, print on this single sheet of paper. Therefore, for this large sheet of paper, rather than using two, you're only using one. Now with that in mind, let's go and click on print. This will pull up our print service dialog, as you see there. If yours shows up like this on a Mac, simply click on show detail and it will show you everything else. The first thing you want to do is choose the paper size because it doesn't automatically choose it for you. So I will choose 13 by 19. I will choose the orientation to be portrait, that's perfectly fine. And I'll double check some settings, particularly in print settings. And what I want to do is confirm that print mode and color mode are grayed out and that the paper selected is proper, sheet feather is correct, and matte paper ultra premium presentation matte is correct there. And I will click on print. I'm not loading the printer right now because I want to show you something in the print queue dialog. So even in here, what you can simply do is highlight, press the space bar, and on a Macintosh system, you can instantaneously preview. And you see right there that this patch is going to print directly in the middle of my paper. And this is definitely not desirable because I cannot print anywhere else on a paper at this point. So we need to figure out how we're going to get around this. I'll cancel this printing and we'll go back to i1 Studio again. I'll click on print one more time, but this time rather than choosing a 13 by 19 sheet of paper, what I'm going to do is come in to manage custom size. And essentially what I am going to do is manipulate the printer in believing that I am going to be inserting a 13 inch wide paper, but the length of the paper rather than having the full 19 inch, I'm only going to cap it at eight and a half inch. So essentially what you would do is create a new paper and you can name this whatever you like. I'm going to name this by size. So I already have one created, but I'll create another one 8.5 by 13. Or you can name this for like Super B patches, whatever you want to call it. I'll call that too. Super B patch printing. Perfect. So what we want to do is we want to set the width 
and the height of the paper. And we want to do this not necessarily in the way how we think about it. So the width of the paper for this 13 by 19 is now 13 and the height of the paper is technically 8.5. So when you dial that in, you can leave the margins and everything else the same. But once you dial that in, this should now print properly on the paper. And this will work the very same way. For example, if you're trying to print on a even larger sheet, for example, 17 by 22, you would have to come in and set the width to 17. If you're trying to do it on 11, set the width to 11 and then set the height. Generally, I find that eight and a half uh, inches work really well for the height, but you can also do nine, nine inches or half the paper length if you want to. And there's a couple ways you can manipulate that. But I'm going to set it to this. I'll press OK. And now that I have that selected down here, I'll click on print and I will still do portrait orientation. Let's look at the print queue dialog again and see what that pops up with. So this is showing up this way right now. It's not really giving us a lot of information, but based on what we see here, the paper is supposed to be vertical. So technically the paper is going to get inserted at the top here. And this is supposed to, this is supposed to print properly. So let's try that out. And because this is a matte paper, I can just simply insert it in using the sheet feather without having to use the Velvet Fine Art front feeder or anything like that. It makes it really convenient to do so. Open this up, open the receiving tray and press resume. So let's see if this prints out properly. One of the things that you can do too, especially in the Epson printer, if you want to just cheat a little bit and see what's coming out and if it's coming out properly is to open this flap up. And you can see right away how the printer is going to lay down information. And so far, I think this is laying down the information perfectly. So we'll wait for this to finish and then we'll confirm our result. While this is printing, I want to mention a couple of things too, is that sometimes if you go in and set this to print, however you put in the incorrect orientation, you may have something that looks like what you're seeing right now. So this is the correct orientation. This is the incorrect orientation. The incorrect orientation, the problem is that if I try to fold this in half right now, you will see that those two patches show up. When that show up, you can't really print on this side anymore because it will overlap with the color information it's going to print. If this is the proper orientation, I can fold this in half and you will see that the last patch set is right before the fold and then on the other side is clear and you can print that out again. So this is set to print vertically and this is print set to print horizontally so don't choose horizontal when you're trying to do these type of prints. As your paper is coming out from the printer a few more tips here so if the paper is coming in this direction what you want to do is verify that the Epson is showing up there and also these extra two boxes are showing up like so. If the Epson the word Epson and the print certification is showing up parallel to the paper like that this means it's coming out in the wrong orientation. Perfect. So now that we have this printed, this is now showing up properly with the proper orientation. And guess what? I'll wait for this to dry. I'll measure this. And then the program is going to create a second iterative patch. From there, what I would simply do is insert it so that this original side is up and the new side is the blank side is pointing down like so. And I can print my second patch set using only one sheet of paper with i1 studio so anyway i hope that you find this quick tip on how to hack i1 studio to print properly on a large sheet of paper and save you paper helpful if you have any questions about this leave in a comment section below give this video a like subscribe if you're new hit on the bell to be notified when i upload cool new contents like this and until next time i just write